Now, in this lesson, we're going to start a whole new chapter, a whole new section of information that you can use all the skills that you've used in the past to grasp and understand this. Starting now, we are going to learn and use complementary numbers with respect to the number 10. Now, in most of the last, I don't know, 10 or so lessons that we've been learning, you've heard me say with respect to the number 5. And when it comes to numbers that add up to 5, there are two pairs, the 3 and the 2 and the 4 and the 1. Well, now, and I'm just guessing, but I'm willing to go out on a limb here and say that as you've started playing around with the abacus and moving beads around, that you started to say to yourself, well, well, I don't quite get it. How do, if, I have, if I do this number, how do, how, do, how do the beads work? Well, this is going to answer some of your questions, and we're going to get there. So, in this lesson, all we're going to do is practice memorizing the pairs of numbers that add up to the number 10. So here they are. First of all is the 9 and the 1. Now, as I, as I lay these out, I don't want you to try and memorize them or add them together. Well, I do want you to memorize them. You just, you don't have to add them together. So you just always keep in your mind the pair 9 and 1. If I say 9, you say 1. If I say 1, you say 9. Well, go through that in your mind. I'm not going to be hanging out with you saying 9 or 1 all day long. But anyways, that's the pair that you memorize, a 9 and a 1. The second pair is the 8 and the two. If I say two, you say eight. If I say eight, you say two. That's the pair. They're always together. If you have to add the number two, you know the number that you're going to work with is eight. And that's how it works. The third pair is the number seven and the number three. Both of those together add up to the number 10, and that's why they're paired together. I say seven, you think three. I say three, you think seven match those together, just pair them inseparably in your mind. The fourth set of numbers is the number six and the number four. If I say four, you think sick. Six. <laughs> you don't have to get sick. If I say six, you think four. Those are always together. And the last is probably pretty obvious, the number five and the number five. Pretty simple. So 9 and 1, 8 and 2, 7 and 3, 6 and 4, and 5 and 5. Those are the complementary numbers with respect to the number 10. Those are all the numbers that exist. Well, real numbers. Those are all the numbers, whole numbers, I guess, that, that add up to the number 10. 9 and 1, 8 and 2, 7 and 3, 6 and 4, 5 and 5. Or 5 and 5, 4 and 6, 3 and 7, 2 and 8, 1 and 9. So, so in this lesson, really, all we wanted to do, before we go on, before we do anything else in the abacus, I mean, 5, that wasn't, too, that wasn't too hard. That was a piece of cake. You only had to memorize two pairs. Well, with the, this next step, you really need to just memorize these pairs. Always have them together in your mind. And depending on where you're at, this may be difficult or it may be hard. But just uh, what, what I'm going to suggest that you do is make yourself some little flashcards. On one side, put the number 9. On the other side, put the number 1. And then the next pair. On one side, put the number 8. On the other side, put the number 2. Do the same thing with 7 and 3, 6 and 4, and 5 and 5. And just kind of shuffle them around in your hands. And just when you see the number 1... See if you can say out loud or just think it in your mind, the complement to that number. So if you see the number one, without turning the card over, you should just think nine. I know this is a piece of cake, and I know that's easy, but this process of think always when you see one of the pairs, to always look to the complement of that number and always have those evenly matched in your mind. The one and the nine, the two and the eight, three and the seven, the four and the six, and the five, and the five. Those pairs will always be together. And anytime you're adding, if you can just think the complement, and I know I've said this, I've probably repeated myself about five times now, 
but that's the next step to do. It's just to memorize these pairs. So that's it for this lesson. Uh, I'll have a little worksheet prepared for you that can print out that with the squares already laid out. You can make your own, but this is just write the complementary numbers on them and just work through them. Get used to matching these pairs together. When you feel like you've got a good grasp on the complementary numbers, come back and watch the next lesson, and we'll start going through the ones column with respect to the number 10. Just like we've done before, simple problems, and I think you'll get it, and you'll get it very quick. Now, one more thing before we go on to the next lesson here. The reason this is so important is you're kind of breaking some alternate methods of thinking out of your mind when it comes to addition and subtraction, because this is really a different way of thinking. And if you can get this, working with the abacus is going to, you'll really be able to keep up with or maybe excel at or be ahead of someone who's using the calculator because you're really mechanizing the process of addition and subtraction. Mechanizing means we're making it, it's just like a machine. By the simple fact that you're, when you see the number one, you think the number nine, you're not adding, you're not subtracting, you're not counting with anything. You're just, just that simple process is what's going to make it the whole process of the, of the abacus become mechanized. Like it's doing the calculating for you. As long as you have those memorized, it makes it so easy. So, yeah, that's why I'm pointing those out to you, and just memorize those, and we'll be ready for the next lesson.